everyone, it's Emily. Today's video is going to be inspired by last year's series that I did where I was watching my old monthly favorites, my oldest monthly favorite, and I was letting you know if these products were still in my life, did I still love them and everything. If you haven't seen that series, definitely recommend checking it out. I will be linking it. But I thought, you know what, it's interesting to just let you know I still have them and stuff, but what if I was trying them on? Because those are all products that used to be favorite products of mine, but I haven't used them much in at least a few months kind of uh, makeup favorites that were forgotten. So I have a pile of makeup products I haven't touched in months and that I used to like love and possibly even raved about on this channel, but I either found something I like better or I completely forgot about them just because, you know, on YouTube you kind of keep trying new products all the time and there's, there's just some products that end up in your drawer and you just forgot they exist. I'm gonna be doing a full face of makeup I've forgotten about and I will be letting you know as I go how I still feel about those products because I haven't touched them in so long that I might still love them, I might have found something better, we shall see. Now that I look at my pal, I actually realized that some of them used to be really, really like raved about on YouTube and not so much nowadays, but I'm curious to see, are they still good or not? So, first product, this is the NYX Angel Veil Skin Perfecting Primer. I haven't heard a lot of people mention this anymore, probably more during the summer a little bit, but this is a great drugstore, or at least I used to think it was a great primer from the drugstore. It's one of those that like supposed to be controlling the oil a little bit, but it's also mostly a glowy one. And really I haven't used primers a lot, probably because my skin went from being dry to being oily. And I feel like I've been kind of hesitant to test too many things and I feel like now oh, I applied way too much. Let me remove a little bit. <laughs> And I feel like this should work on oily skin. The texture is very silicone-y. Maybe that's why people aren't super crazy about it anymore, but this was so raved about. I like the texture still, actually, and I like that it's a nice glowy. It's not like bam in your face. I'm like super shimmery. I still like the texture of this. I do feel like my skin looks more smooth. We'll see how my foundation goes on top of it. Next is a foundation that I used to love so much, but once again, my skin went through some changes and I feel like my taste has changed a little bit and it is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Foundation. Come on, everyone was raving about this foundation. And really, even nowadays, if someone were to ask me for the perfect foundation to try at a drugstore and they have like normal to like dry skin and they want something that gives them good coverage but still looks like skin, it still definitely would be one of the options I would mention. So I just haven't tried it on in a real long time. But I can't imagine this not being a good foundation. There's just no way. The only thing is, this is my summer shade. They don't have my winter shade, so I will be having to blend it down my neck. But this is a great foundation. I'm sure I'm still gonna like this. There's no way I don't like this. It just, I've been into more full coverage because my skin has been breaking out a lot more and I'm definitely more oily. And I feel like this might not be the best for oily skin, but I remember people with oily skin liking it, so I just need to do it and put it on, so kind of why I'm including it here. The coverage seems good, actually. The color's definitely way too dark, but they don't have, like, C1 or 2 in America. I know, I believe there's a few places in Europe that has it, but not here. Yeah, you can see the difference. Obviously there's a color difference, but the coverage is pretty good. I would say like light medium, you can definitely put more on, but I'm using a sponge because I like how natural it makes it look. Now I'm kind of realizing why I haven't been wearing this as much. I feel like I used to have dry skin, but it wasn't that dehydrated just around my nose. And now I feel like because it's the winter right now, this foundation isn't the best for this because dehydration definitely shows around my nose and even like my forehead. And I do have quite a few little breakouts and the coverage is definitely light medium. So if you have perfect skin and you just want that like perfect glowy everyday foundation, I can see myself liking this again this summer. But right now, this is definitely not the best foundation for me at all. So, huh, okay. So I still think it's a great foundation but definitely not for everyone as much as I thought it would be. There's a reason I stop using it on a daily basis, but I will give it another shot this summer because I'm sure I'm gonna like it once my skin isn't as dehydrated. And if I'm not breaking out too much, although I could always just use concealer wherever I need it, but. Okay. 
From afar though, I still think it gives you a really nice finish, like gotta admit from this distance, but if I zoom you in, girl ate some chocolate, you know, craving that time of the month, and I've been breaking out, and you can definitely see, I tried to put a little bit more, and I don't feel like it's that well covered. Definitely can still see the redness and around here too, and you can see it's pretty dry too, so it's like, eh. Same thing here, and there's definitely some dryness on my nose. Hopefully you can kind of see. Sometimes my camera, when I try to zoom, and like, it just doesn't want to focus properly, but... Definitely not the best finish on me right now. <laughs> it's definitely too dark for me right now. I'm hoping my camera won't make me look like a Hoompa Loompa. It doesn't look that bad in person, but if I put my hand next to it, you can... <laughs> it's too dark. Okay, powder. <gasps> okay, I don't know about you, but in my head right now, anything other than transparent loose powders don't exist. <laughs> Again, because my skin got oily, I completely forgot about anything other than loose powders and I've been like doing a little project plan to myself. I filmed a video but I never posted it because that's so much commitment, so much pressure, I can't deal. But I am trying to use up my cover effects. This is the uh, matte setting powder and it's a loose, not really transparent powder. This one is the light version and as you can see, I'm almost there. So I have been using this a lot or any other like loose powder that are transparent. It's just been something I've been really into because they help a lot control the oil and I've been completely neglecting another product that I used to love so much. Even when I have dry skin, it's... Let me talk about it. Don't you remember everyone raving about this? This is the MAC Studio Fix powder. I have the shade. This is the NC at 15. But this one might make me a little paler and match my head a little better. We'll try this. But this is still nowadays when I swatch this, it's just a beautiful powder. It's very, very smooth. It does have a little bit of coverage. So if you're someone you don't like uh, foundation, you prefer something that is a powder, this is great because it gives you a little bit of uh, coverage. But it doesn't look powdery and cakey on the skin at all. And like I said, I used this when my skin was dry. But now I need to test it with oily skin. I feel like it should be even better. But again, since I've been into something that is like really full coverage foundation wise, I haven't felt the need to go for this. And I don't really like to apply, reapply powder that has color because I'm scared it's gonna start looking weird. <sighs> so let's try applying this because I'm curious if I'm still gonna like this because I would still recommend this powder. It's just that it's not something I've been gravitating towards because I use so many other things instead. I'm not sure how it's gonna look on top of this foundation since I already felt like my skin was looking pretty dehydrated. Why is it so hard to say? <laughs> By the way, I'm using one of those uh, new e.l.f. brushes. This one is 101 and it is huge, like so big, but it's very fluffy and soft. Wow. Do we all realize what Emily forgot to do? It's eight in the morning. I woke up to film this video. <laughs> Totally forgot to apply under eye concealer. Okay, let's do this. I mean, this one, we all know this one. I feel like this one still people are raving about it, but I haven't talked about this or tried this in so long. And it is the LA Girl Pro Conceal High Definition Concealer. And I feel like when it first came out, I kind of felt the pressure to like this more than I actually liked this. And I do think, I never thought it gave full coverage, putting it out there. Uh, it never did, at least on me, and I always felt like it was a little bit drying, but I feel like most concealers kind of look a little dry under my eyes just because my eyes are dry. But when I swatched here, it does seem to give a lot of coverage, but I never was able to get said coverage under my eyes. So we're going to try this and see if young Emily didn't know what she was doing or if it's just a product not agreeing with me, because I know this is like holy grail for so many people, but... When I do a like favorite concealer from drugstore, I don't think this is gonna be there for me, but it might. Is it stuck? Ugh, it doesn't want to squeeze, and now I feel like it's gonna attack me. Oh, we got it. There you go. It's definitely light actually, but we're gonna go for that uh, reverse raccoon, which everyone was doing a few years ago, right? Maybe try to fix my nose because it's looking a bit dry. <laughs> try to get some coverage on the... There you go. Might as well go full on, right? Yeah, it's definitely light for me right now with that foundation. I 
don't think my under eyes like this. I've been doing this experiment where I'm testing two different eye cream, one on each eye for all the however long it takes for me to actually notice a difference and if I prefer one to the other and if one of them doesn't react well with makeup and everything and ooh. so far I've noticed that much of a difference but this concealer is not agreeing with this side that's for sure like I have like dry ugh. okay so I did the other side but yeah I'm kind of nervous that one eye is going to start looking really bad compared to the other one but you know, gotta do it for science. Do you do that too? I feel like when a, the product doesn't work for me, I always think like I'm the problem, but sometimes the product just doesn't agree with you and I'm like, why does it not work for me? What am I doing wrong? But if you need a special technique, that's my theory, if you need a special technique to make your product work, maybe the product is the problem, you know? I don't think it should be this difficult to use a product. Like it should be idiot proof. And if I can't make it work, it's not worth it. It's kind of weird because there's like dry little flecks of skin and I don't think my under eyes were that dry, but they definitely don't look good right now. I feel like it looks worse on this eye than this one, so I don't know if it's the eye cream. <laughs> Let's do that oh so flattering zoom. <laughs> but you might be able to tell there's little flecks of like skin. So I don't know if it's my skin today being weird as hell because like I said, I woke up with a bunch of pimples. When will I learn that lactose is not my friend? But yeah, there's some like weird specks of skin. It doesn't look that great on me. So I think I'm gonna give it one more shot on a different day whenever my skin looks good. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna have to declutter this. I don't like it. It does have more coverage than I remember though. Like you can definitely see from afar. It seems to give me really great coverage. And on camera, I definitely feel like my under eyes right now are looking quite bright. But from close, it's not really flattering. I don't think I'm gonna powder my under eyes because I definitely don't think my under eyes would appreciate it. But yeah, it has more coverage than I remember, but if it's definitely how it wears whenever I try it again, it's just not a concealer that works for my skin tone. I just remember now why I didn't use it anymore. I don't know why I thought it looked good and how I liked it, but no. No, this is definitely something that I prefer of the things, and I will be doing actually a video about my favorite uh, drugstore concealers because won't be in it. <gasps> oh, 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 okay, this one, Everyone used to rave about it like years ago when I first like started watching YouTube Everyone thought that Hoola by Benefit was like the bronzer to use and people used to contour with this I used to contour with this and like Girl girl, how is that even a bronzer that works for you? I can use this with a light hand middle of summer I'm not someone that really likes to have like a deep uh, bronzy like bronzer it just doesn't really suit my face shape or just, it's just not my taste. I think it looks great on other people, just not on me. And this, I would use in the middle of winter. Like, girl, this is way too muddy for you. They have a light version though, and you can see there's like quite a dent in this thing. Like, I have used this. But yeah, if I swatch it, like, it is dark. But maybe with that dark foundation. Actually, let me test all those uh, e.l.f. brushes. I haven't tried all of them. This one is the... 105, which kind of looks like it can work for bronzer. So we're gonna use it a light hand because This is dark But everyone used to like this and <laughs> See what I mean? I am gonna add a bit more powder because I'm gonna look crazy It might be my skin because like I mentioned I feel like that foundation right now on me is definitely dehydrating or emphasizing any dehydration but this is a really pigmented bronzer and it works really well if you have tan skin, especially a warmer undertone than I do. And even with that foundation that is my summer shade, I'm not tan. Like, I just gotta accept this. I'm not tan. And with a light hand, you can see, you can make it work, but it's definitely not an all year round bronzer for me. And I feel like when you have to use such a light hand, maybe it's just not worth it. You know what I mean? I feel like I've been really into using cheap products that are low maintenance, very, I don't have to be really careful in the morning. Cause sometimes I just don't feel like turning on my ring light. In everyday life, not everyone has a ring light to put their makeup on. So yeah. So I think in this case, it's very much a vey, it's not the product, it's me. I have learned that this is something that doesn't really work for me. It's too dark for me, but I can definitely see this working really well for other people. Like I said, someone with a more tan skin than me, but yeah, I can still make this work, but only 
you know, specific time during the year, middle of summer. So this is why it's not a favorite anymore, but I don't think it's a bad product. So next product is something I was crazy about last summer, the one before, and then like for a month or two, obsessed with it and then stopped using it probably because I have a bajillion blushes and I moved on. <laughs> and it is the Balm, the Balm Beach blush. And look at this. How cute is this? This is such a great color, kind of peachy, neutral-ish, boring blush. And I mean, look at the packaging. The Balm always get me from that packaging. They're just way too adorable. But for some reason, it went back into my drawer and I stopped using it. And it's because, I'm pretty sure it's because I moved. That could be a reason. So I haven't touched this in a while. Let's put it on. Let's try the same brush, actually. <laughs> just another one, just to see if I like it better for blush than bronzer. Although it did work really well. This blush isn't as pigmented as the bronzer, so I won't have to be as careful, but look how pretty that is. You know what? After trying it, I still think it's a really great blush. It's just I have too many blush and I need to like force myself to have a rotation there. And I think I'm going to be putting this on my desk and keeping it as a perfect like spring summer color. It's if you're looking for a great everyday peachy pink type of color, I would definitely recommend this. Especially if you're someone that, oh, I can't wear a peach, try this because it's just, just enough peach to make it wearable. <gasps> highlighter. I feel like, again, this is something that used to be super popular, but everyone moved to like blinding highlighters and the ones that are a little bit more glowy kind of got completely forgotten. And do you remember this one? This is the Stila All Over Shimmer Duo in Kitten. Everyone loved this. I love this and I haven't touched this in at least a year, if I'm being honest with myself. It's been a while and I need to like start using it or something. And if you mix the two colors, it's such a natural glowy highlighter. Swatching won't be, it doesn't do it justice, but it's a glowy bronzer highlighter. But like I said, everyone kind of went into those blinding ones. So I'm gonna use this one. This is a Sephora contouring brush, but <laughs> we're gonna go with it. It's such a natural glowy one. We're just too much into those like blinding ones. My skin is not looking good from clothes because of the foundation, but wow. It's such a cute natural glow though. Do you see this? If you like natural highlighter, you're probably hating the beauty community right now, but yes, I really like this. And oh my God, do I hate this foundation right now. <gasps> My skin and my under eyes are looking so bad. Wow. That's why I stopped using them. I, I just want to wash my face right now. That's crazy. A good thing I tried them on again because I still thought I loved those products. Maybe not the under eyes uh, concealer, but I still thought I would love this foundation and right now I am hating it. Wow, I need to try it during the summer though. But, but yeah, this uh, highlighter is a big plus for me. It's definitely an everyday naturally glowy uh, highlighter. But I feel like we're so much me included now into those really blinding ones that this doesn't compare. But if you're someone you hate glitter, you hate shimmer, you hate like metallic highlighters that are all the rage. I thought I had the new uh, Maybelline one here, but oh yeah, it's here. Like this one. How intense is this one? Let me compare them just because it's fun. Like the Maybelline one is literally an eyeshadow. And I'll focus on just the lighter shade of this one. You can see the difference in texture. Like this one is literally an eyeshadow. So look at this. One is lightly glowy, the other one is like blinding. I'm definitely not gonna get rid of this because I can definitely see myself using it uh, on a daily basis to go to work or something. But if you don't like something super intense, don't waste your money. <laughs> when is the last time Emily touched this? A very, very long time ago. I think it was actually in my monthly favorite, one of the monthly favorite in that series where I was going back to my old ones. So I haven't touched this in a long time. I don't even know if it's still good, but I used to love this clearly because you need the tiniest amount of this. This is the Dip Brow Pomade, Pomade. I never know how you're supposed to pronounce it. And this one is in medium brown. So let's try this because I haven't touched this in a while. I'm going to use again the e.l.f. one. This is, this is the 203 and I'm going to attempt to do my brows with this. I know I'm going to have to use a lighter hand than I'm used to using like the Brow Wiz. But I like how it looks on the people. Like it looks so precise, but I'm gonna admit it. I'm too lazy to like clean up my brows with concealer and everything. So 
that is one of the reason I stopped using it because once again, I like things that are easy to use. And this, it doesn't take that much to overdo it. Whoa, it's so easy. Wow, okay, maybe I like this still. <laughs> Barely need any product. I feel like it gets better when it's dry because I remember this being so messy. Maybe it's gonna be worth me using again. So I feel like I'm a little rusty to apply it, but I'm liking this so much more than I remember. I thought, oh, you know, it's too cakey for every day and everything, but I mean, it's not my best brow job, but wow. I like this, okay. I have to say, I'm pretty rusty at applying like a cream product, but I am loving this. Oh my God, okay. I didn't expect to like start finding new favorite, old favorite. I never thought I would go back to using this. I'm happy. I need a bit of practice, but I feel like it's even better now that it's a little drier. It's still creamy, but not as like intense as it was. So I feel like if I were to repurchase it eventually, I would like keep it open for a little while. Now the eye makeup, I'm gonna start by applying this because I don't know about you, but I've been seeing a lot of people using the Urban Decay eyeshadow eye primer, or at least I haven't used this in a while because I either use foundation or my uh, Tarte Shape Tape, which I feel like everyone has been using under eyelids. And I haven't used this. And I used to really like this. I feel like everyone used to rave about this and wear this so much. I've forgotten the texture. <laughs> it's almost a little silicone-y and a bit sticky, but I remember absolutely loving this. It's looking so bad. I swear, I don't even think I'm gonna be testing it again. I'm declaring right now, LA Girl Pro Conceal, you're dead to me. After this, nah. -uh. Eyeshadow palette. Ah, uh, this one, I was so happy when I got it and I haven't used this in a while. And I feel like not a lot of people have been talking about Lorac anymore. Everyone used to love Lorac, but after like the Mega Pro 1, I feel like it just died completely. So Lorac Pro 3 palette. I loved this when it came out. Look at those colors. They're so beautiful. They're very neutral, but at the same time, there's just that little thing, you know, that's a little bit different that the uh, Color that looks a little mustardy and like there's a little bit of the uh, berry shade. It looks great. But I haven't touched this in so long. But I want to use this. The only thing is I remember right now that this color, which I loved, uh, Medaillon, this one. Worst texture ever. It's the first time I don't like an eyeshadow from Lorac. But all the other ones are really great. So I'm going to try to do a look with it. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing because my under eyes are like killing me right now. I'm <laughs> just gonna start by applying Blanc all over my eyelids just to prime that primer because I feel like it's a little sticky and I'm afraid it's gonna make blending kind of hard. I'm using one of the new Wet n Wild eyeshadow brushes thingy. This is P75. I don't think this is one of the ones that are necessary unless you want to use it for your under eye setting powder or to apply your highlighter. I'm gonna be sharing actually in my upcoming winter favorites, the ones I think are worth the money because the whole kit is kind of pricey for wet and well. Okay, so I'm going to start by applying um, a mix of cool taupe and canvas just to make it light because I feel like my, I still feel like wintry even though I'm wearing like a summer foundation and I don't want to overdo it and go too dark too quickly. By the way, if you have never tried the Lorac eyeshadows, I do feel like they're quite powdery. You can see that there's quite a bit of powder there, but I really like the texture of them. I feel like they're really easy to blend out. I like them but just for some reason. I haven't been reaching out to those palettes anymore. But again, it's possibly because they're, I feel like harder and harder to come by. But I also feel like Mega Pro 2 and 3 were kind of flops in general. It kind of made me forget about their products a lot. I'm going to start by applying a bit of clay and dark brown in my outer V just to build up that side slowly because I think I'm going to go with the burgundy shade in my outer V. Just want to make sure everything will blend out as well as possible. It's going to be kind of difficult because of texture of my skin right now. 
but the more layers, I feel like the easier it's gonna be to make it look blend out. I don't feel like that shade, even when you don't apply it over top of anything, looks that berry. I think that might have been one of the things that was disappointing about that palette. For my lid, I'm gonna mix uh, rose bronze and light pewter. I don't know about you, but I feel like they're looking a little muddy, and I don't know if it's the texture of my skin, like I mentioned, it's not looking that great, but I remember liking this a lot more, and I feel like a lot of the colors, once they're blend out, kind of look very similar. I think it, just for fun, I'm gonna use the like warm brown that looks almost a little mustardy, just all over my under eyes, just to hide the dryness. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just not feeling it for some reason. I feel like all the uh, darker shades kind of ended up looking quite muddy and blending into each other and kind of looking all the same. And I'm gonna be including swatches on my arm, so maybe you're gonna be able to see that they're not that different when swatched. Like even the two shimmery colors, I tried to swatch them on my hand and I don't feel like they're that different even though they kind of look different before you swatch them. I do like the color on the bottom. I feel like I need to try it with a real mustard shade. I think that could be fun, so. I'm a little underwhelmed actually with this one. I feel like I used to like it more than I do now. Maybe that's why I stopped using it? Eyeliner, I'm gonna be using the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeliner. This is the lacquer liner in black is black. They actually did change the packaging. Now it's a, a black top, but I have this one. Oh yeah, it's still just as creamy as I remember it. I kind of just stopped using gel liner because I like how easy it is to just grab a liquid one and pop it on without having to find a clean brush. This is so matte and dark. I went a little eyeliner crazy, but I like it. I do think it's like a lot of work on a daily basis. It's, it's taking me much longer than it does to use a liquid one but it's probably because I'm a little bit out of practice, but I will try to do that more often because I really like how dark and black and matte it is. I'm opening a new one because I obviously haven't kept this mascara for three years. And it is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. This is, I believe, my favorite Maybelline mascaras. And the reason I haven't repurchased this over and over again or I haven't used this in a while is because I do a lot of testing of new mascara. I do group reviews and I love doing those. I have another one planned and this, I remember really liking it, but once again, I wasn't able to test a bunch while also repurchasing the ones that I really like, so I wanted to use this one again. I remember it's quite liquidy when you first open it, but I think it gets better and better as it dries down to a more, less liquidy version. I am not feeling this mascara at all, which is so weird. It is quite liquidy, so it's quite black on my lashes, but it doesn't seem to give me much curl, well, no curl whatsoever, and not much of anything. So from a close, you can see how horrible my under eyes are looking right now, but the lashes, there's barely any lashes, and my lashes are pretty good, but this is not doing anything for me. It's just, nope. So we're gonna apply some lashes to hide this a little, and I wanted to mention these lashes because I loved those when I first started applying lashes because I thought lashes are, were way too expensive and I wanted to just experiment and decide if I liked them or not. And I really liked the e.l.f. Natural Lash Kit, which back in the day they were $1. I think maybe it might be 2 now. I feel like the essential line increased from $1 to $2. Still really affordable. And these were my favorite one between the dramatic one and the natural one. And the natural one, I feel like the length is just slightly longer than my natural lashes, so it still looks quite natural. I didn't like wearing like really long dramatic lashes back in the day. So if you are like that, definitely would recommend these. They're really good, but I think I still prefer something like the Ardell Denny Wispies. So you see how much more natural uh, the Ardell one looks like? But we're gonna try them on anyway. I also feel like even though the Ardell one are more expensive, I feel like they last better because these ones just removing them, I feel like the shape is already all messed up. I thought the quality wasn't bad when I used to use them and now I'm like, I haven't even tried applying them and I'm already not feeling it. <laughs> it's so funny because I used to love these so much and I thought they looked quite natural and now I feel like they look so plasticky. 
I'm really surprised by this. Okay. Hopefully you can notice, but I feel like these look so plasticky. I'm so used to like pretty, you know, natural, fluttery, wispy lashes that now this isn't working for me at all. You know what's crazy is that if someone had asked me if I thought the e.l.f. $1 lashes, $2 lashes were worth the money, even if it's just to like practice yourself to apply them, I would have said yes. And now I don't think I would say yes because I feel like they're so flimsy that it can make it either easier for you or much harder depending on, you know, you. But I feel like they look a lot less natural than I remember them. They're not horrible. I still think they're okay. But if I were to like buy lashes, I don't think these would be my first one. I feel like on camera, you probably, it probably doesn't look bad, but I don't think so. And then last but not least, I feel like it's not that difficult for me to kind of forget lipsticks in my collection. I have too many and I do test quite a few. So sometimes some of them kind of get lost. And this is a line of lipstick that I still think could work for some people, but they're not my favorites anymore, which, do you remember these? The NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. I have a full lip swatch video swatching all of these on my arm and on my lips, but I don't reach for these as much because if I want something that is transfer proof, which these are mostly transfer proof, I feel like I go for something that is like really long wearing, like real liquid lipstick. And I feel like this were the only things that were available a few years ago in terms of like liquid lipstick. They were pretty much transfer proof, but if you eat, most of it was gonna be gone, you have to reapply. But if you don't like something that is drying whatsoever, this could be your liquid lipstick because it is mostly transfer proof, like I mentioned. So it's just something I used to use a lot and I still recommend for people with dry lips, but I feel like nowadays we have better liquid lipstick out there. So I'm gonna, I don't know which color I'm gonna be wearing. We're gonna mix and match probably something like Zurich or Ken, something like that. Maybe those two mix together. The colors are still really pretty though. It's a pretty moussey liquid lipstick. They're so comfortable, but if I wear them, it's more like a lipstick, not a liquid lipstick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ken is really pretty. I need to actually wear this again. <laughs> Maybe it's too bright. Instead of Zurich, I'm going to go with London just to make it a little brownier for, for it to match my eye look a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's better. You know what, actually I like them a lot more than I remember. I don't think I would call them liquid lipstick anymore, although they kind of are, but they're more like lipsticks than anything, like in the liquid form, but I like it. So let's go one by one. The primer, I mean, it still looks like a great silicone primer, but right now I don't think I need anything that is silicone-y with my dry skin during the winter. It's too dehydrated to use it. The foundation is a very meh, but again, I never really liked it during the winter, so I'll try it this summer. The concealer is a huge no. Like, this is probably a product that I hate the most here. Like, I, how did I ever like this? Like, from afar, it's not that bad. It does definitely give some coverage, more than I remember. But my under eyes, if your under eyes are slightly dehydrated, this is hell. Like, hell. My under eyes are like dying right now, and maybe during the winter and during the summer, it would be better. But right now, it's like ruining my makeup, and I just can't deal. Powder, I still like it. It just, I think I prefer currently, uh, you know, loose, transparent powder. They're just more practical. But I still think this is a great product. Same thing with the Hula bronzer. I still think it's a great bronzer. Not the best one for me and just for like the middle of summer. So this summer I'll try it out. And if I feel like I don't reach for it that much, I probably will just give this to someone else. The Balm Blush, thumbs up, really like it. I need to wear it more. Stila, like it, but more for like a subtle everyday highlighter. Not so much for like intense right now. Like I feel like everyone likes something really intense and it's a nice glow right now, but it's definitely not crazy. Brows, I'm so happy. I am really liking my brows. They're not perfect because again, I am not used to it anymore, but I think it looks great. They're really well defined. I Eyeshadow, I'm really, really underwhelmed. I really like the color uh, on my lower lashes because it's kind of mustardy, like I said. I think I need to try a look like, the, like this with like really intense mustard color under my eyes. But I feel like on my lids, it might be a little bit because of this made my whole eye like very dehydrated, but I just feel like the colors are kind of muddy and didn't blend nicely. Like they blend into each other to look all the same color type of thing. And I remember liking this so much more. If you have used this uh, eyeshadow palette, by the way, let me know in the comment section if you feel similarly. 
maybe that's why I stopped using it. I'm, I remember really liking this and I'm not. L'Oreal gel liner is a thumbs up. I just completely understand why I don't use it on a daily basis. It's just so much more work than a liquid one. Maybe I'm lazy, but I need to practice again, but I really like how dark and matte it is. So once I'm a little bit more used to it, I think I will enjoy this again. Disappointed, that's literally the word for this. I just, I thought I liked this so much more than I do. Do not use near fire, flame, or heat. How flammable is this? And the lashes just, I'm not feeling them. They're not horrible, but they're way more plasticky than I remember. And yeah, the lipstick. I like them, I will use them more, but I understand why they're not raved about as much. They're just not that classic liquid lipstick. Actually, let me do the transfer test because I haven't tested that in a long time, but I don't know how dry they are right now though. I don't think they're fully dried, but there's some transfer but I did apply a quite thick amount, but I'm liking them mixed together. They're really pretty. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section if you have used any of those products, if you forget about them, are you still using them? Are there products out there that you completely forgot in your collection? Go check it out because honestly, some of these I'm really happy I found again. And some of these, I don't think I'm gonna be as sad to declutter. I will be putting on the screen other videos that I recommend you check out and I will see you in my next one. Bye.